the text verse is from 1 Corinthians 2.16, and that says that we have the mind of Christ. So can you look at somebody and say, you have the mind of Christ? Yeah. Do you believe that? You really believe it? All right. So then if it's already in you, then we have to ask ourselves, am I yielding to it? Am I aligning myself with the mind of Christ that's in me? And that's why it says, align your mind with the mind of Christ in you. And that's, that's what I hope you remember today. Somebody asked you, what did he talk about? Now you know what to say. I'm aligning my mind with the mind of Christ. Because the world will really try to shift, the, the, change the dial, change your station of what you're listening to. And I don't think the devil really cares what distraction you fall into as long as you're not focused on the Lord. As long as you're caught up in your emotions and you're caught up in something other than, which we know the, the Bible says is idolatry. And he's really good at getting us hooked, the enemy, on things that aren't redemptive. And the word of God is redemptive. So one of the things we've been doing on, on Wednesday nights is just focusing in on scripture in songs, in, in the worship songs, and, and how you can enrich your worship time and your, and your uh, what would we call it, your devotional time with the Lord, that separation that you have in the morning. Hopefully, when you say, I want to get ready to go out into the world, I don't know exactly what I'm going to face, but I know that you hold my future, Lord, and if I do it your way, I'll do better than if I try to do it my way. Anybody agree? So that's another way you could do it is to open up scripture and sing the Psalms. And we're just trying to bring that out every week. That's another great way to memorize the verses in the Bible is to sing them. Amen. So hopefully that's been meaningful to you. But then I also took John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That means Jesus is God in the flesh. He's the image of the visible image of the invisible God. Yeah. You believe that? Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. That God so loved the world that he would give us that example. And, but he was just a carpenter in, in a small little town. And if you go into New York, they run that, that line at the end of the Christmas show at Radio City Music Hall. Never traveled more than a certain amount of miles from his town. And nobody in the history of man has influenced mankind more than Jesus. Never wrote a book. It was all just what other people learned about him when they were with him. And look, before I was saved, this time of year reminds me of that often, you know, every year when I come to this point. This is the time of year when I both had a terrible tragedy and then two years later accepted the Lord. And in that two-year period, boy, it got real dark for me. So I'm, I'm, I have that remembrance of the tragedy, but then I also have the remembrance of getting born again at this time of year. So it's, it's, a, it's a little bit of a two-edged sword. And just be aware that Christmas can be very hard for people that have experienced a tragedy at that time of year. And we want to we want to be aware of that. We want to minister to those needs and be there for people. And they can't always tell you why they might be sad because it's so deep down in there, wherever that hurt is. But Jesus, boy, he really is the answer. So let's just minister his love to people and, and you know what God said? He would take what the devil meant for evil and turn it around for good. That's what he did in my life. So I want to just go through that verse where we see that we have the mind of Christ. It says the natural man does not receive the things of the spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. And again, this happened to me in, in 1980 when the tragedy happened. I didn't become a Christian until 1983, and it didn't occur to me that God would be the answer to get me out of the mess I was in. I thought I already knew God. I thought God was the church, and I grew up in a denominational church, and, you know, I didn't sense any power when I went there. I didn't think that I could possibly have the answer. But what you do when you're in pain is you try to medicate your pain. And the, the, the track that I was on just kept going further and further down and descending into worse behavior until I realized I have nothing to lose than try Jesus because I, my life is in such a pit right now that it can only get better from here. But I would ask you, don't wait until that happens because the benefits of knowing the Lord cannot even be stated how many things happen to you when you say yes to a personal relationship with Jesus. 
He is the visible image of an invisible God. And then his spirit lives inside of us to give us the life that he brings, that Zoe life. It's not just bios life, that it, it's, it's a living thing. It's Zoe life, which gives us the understanding of the kingdom of God in this natural earth. And what a difference that makes. But the natural man doesn't receive the things of God, of spirit of God, sorry, for they are foolishness to him. Nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. So we need an awakening of our spirit, man. And often it's in recognition that our way isn't working. And look, all the money, that's what I've been doing most of my career is working with wealthy people. And, you know, that's it's certainly, I know what people say, well, I'd like to have that problem. <laughs> if you say a lot, of, a lot of people that have money aren't necessarily happy because of that. And it can become an idol. That's mammon. That's what Jesus said. Be careful. It's a spirit that never has enough. And you can't have enough. But God so loved the world that he gave. And then we take on his character. And we're not bound by that spirit of mammon. We give the money because we want to advance his kingdom. And when he sees our heart is for that, he gives us more. Because he knows that we're stewarding it well for his kingdom. And that's a spiritual discernment. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he, him, uh, he himself is rightly judged by no one. And then we get a quote from Isaiah, and I'm going to spend a little time here in Isaiah uh, because it's, it's rich. It says, for who has known the mind of the Lord? Again, this is Paul quoting it in 1 Corinthians. Who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. So let's just pray. Put your hand on your head and say, Lord, thank you that you've given me the mind of Christ and put it on your heart as well because there's an interaction between our heart and our head and we want you to be the one that guides our thinking, Lord. We want to take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ and we know your word says to guard our heart for out of our heart flows the issues of life and we want your mind in our bodies, Lord. Whatever's stopping that from happening, reveal it to us so we can crucify and, and move on to the resurrected power that you want for us. And he will, in Jesus' name. He will show us what needs to go. In another portion of Isaiah 64, it says, We remember that long ago, verse 3 and 4, Long ago you did amazing things for us that we had never dreamed you'd do. You came down and the mountain shook at your presence. <laughs> and you remember, might remember uh, Exodus 19 when Moses went up and got the Ten Commandments and all the people said, you go, Moses. We don't want to go. Because it was so scary and, and so profound what they were seeing. And that had never happened before. And that's, that's what they said. We've never dreamed you do. You came down and the mountain shook at your presence. Nothing like that had ever happened before. No eye had ever seen and no ear had ever heard such wonders. But you did them then for the sake of your people, for those who trusted in you. Anybody here trusted in the Lord today? I hope that's your trust and not in anything else. <laughs> but now Paul is reminding them that, wait a minute, that was something that he did that he had never done before. But right now, he's also doing things he's never done before. Before the ages began, God graciously decided to use his wisdom for our glory. Thank you, Lord. That your wisdom is used to bring glory into our lives, even in this secular world. Even in the stain-filled place where we live, it's sin-stained. But we have your glory working in our lives. It's not grasped. That wisdom from God is not grasped by the ruling powers of this age. If they had understood, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as Scripture says, come on, you might know this verse. Say it with me. No eye has ever seen, no ear has ever heard, and it has never occurred to the human heart all the things God prepared for those who love him. Make it real to us, Lord. We love you. Make it real to us, all the things that you have prepared for us. And he finishes it here. He says, God has shown these profound and startling realities through his spirit. So can you just be receptive for a minute and say, Lord, show me these profound and startling realities through Holy Spirit in my life. My life is a temple for your spirit. 
Yeah, let's just be aware that he doesn't force himself on us. And if we want the mind of Christ, we have to seek it. Right? Your flesh is going to keep you drifting away from that. But when you get intentional and you, I want to see the profound and startling realities that you have for me through your spirit. Then it says the spirit searches all things, even the deep mysteries of God. Who can see into a man's heart and know his thoughts? A prophet. <laughs> but how does the prophet do it? It's the spirit that speaks and shows us things. And you should be asking the Lord to show you things about the people you love and speak what God says over them to them. But he's saying the spirit in the man that dwells within the man knows. In the same way, the thoughts of God are known only by his spirit. We have not received the spirit of this rebellious and broken world. What have we received? The spirit that comes from God so that we may experience and comprehend the gifts that come from God. What a great Christmas thing to focus on right there. The great gifts that come from you, Lord. Separate the wheat from the chaff in our lives. Show us what's clutter. Show us what's taking up our, our mind space and say, no, we reject it as a counterfeit. It's all second place to what you want to say to us and how you want us to live our lives. And look, maybe you understand this principle, but you get more when you're willing to give away what you have. So however the, the Lord has blessed you with whatever gifts that he's placed in your life, as you use those gifts and you empty yourself out, he fills you with more. And there's something about the doing that's different. It's not just theory. It's practice. You're, you're, you're exercising those muscles. I quoted this a little while ago. John 1.10 says, he entered our world, a world he made, yet the world did not recognize him. Even though he came to his own people, they refused to listen and receive him. Help us, Lord, not to be these stiff-necked people. That you came to us and we refuse to receive you because you don't fit in the model that we have. Or it's inconvenient. We repent of that way of thinking, of rejecting your presence in our lives. Open our hearts to receive the way you want to speak to us and not be bound by the rules of the engagement of the devil. We're not going to refuse to listen and receive you. For all who did receive him and trust in him, he gave them the right to be reborn as children of God. Whatever that is now, 40, almost 42 years ago when I was sitting in a church that Christmas, um, they said this, and I said, I'm going to try it. I, I didn't answer the altar call in that church service, but, but that church service, if you've heard me tell my story, it was New Year's Day of 1983 that I did get saved in my kitchen because my mother barged into my room and made me get up. And uh, there was a guy named Dave Toba on the TV, just coincidentally, you know, an evangelist on the TV. And as I sat down, he looked into the camera and he said, that joint that you smoked last night is like another nail in your coffin. Really? The hangover that you're feeling and that headache that you're feeling right now, that's another nail in your coffin. And I was just like, wave the white flag of surrender, like, okay, I get it. Enough. Please. And just right there in the kitchen, I said yes to the Lord. And uh, my mom was the one, right, that that had that influence. She had talked to me for years and never stopped trying and never kept, never stopped talking to me about it because she loved me. So we have to remember that. Amen? I'm quickly going to go through this because it's right in Luke chapter 1. And, and if you want some homework this week, this is a great chapter. There's so many verses in Luke chapter 1. And it's all around uh, the birth of the Lord. And, 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 and the, the father of John the Baptist compared to Mary, right? We, saw, we sang that song about Mary. It says, my, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, right? Like, wow, that young teenage girl who had no idea what was coming. But we can learn a lesson from John the Baptist's father, Zacharias, because Gabriel came and speak to him. He was a priest, and Gabriel shows up. And we have to be careful that when God shows up in our life, we stop the other stuff we're doing, and we pay attention, and we don't miss the day of our visitation. Because he'll use people that are aware of his presence. And if we're just going to be tone deaf, 
we got to wake up. This is the most important thing that could have happened to Zacharias. He's a priest. He's supposed to know these things. There's a higher accountability for people in leadership, right? And the angel shows up and says what most angels tell people when they first show up is don't be afraid. Guess why? Because they're pretty scary. And they're bright and they're shining and like, whoa. Don't be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son and you shall call his name John. What does it say? Your prayer is heard. And we don't know what prayer, it doesn't specifically say, but you could assume that because it says your wife is going to give birth, that that might have been the prayer. But even if that wasn't his prayer, why wouldn't he be praying as a priest, God, come down and destroy the Romans and give us a, a free nation again? We don't know what the prayer was, but here's Gabriel showing up right in your room and saying, don't be afraid, your prayer's been answered. Would that make you happy? Oh, I mean, Really? But no, because there's this little trick of the devil to, to use logic. And how is that going to happen? And, you know, we love a man named Joseph Garlington. He's a bishop out in Pittsburgh. He had T-shirts made up that said, get the how out of here. <laughs> and that's what, that's what, coming up here, the angel Gabriel, high-ranking angel says, you will have joy and gladness and many will rejoice at the birth of your son for he will be great in the sight of the Lord and shall drink neither wine or strong drink. He will also be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb. He, John the Baptist, will also go before him, capital H, Jesus, in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. Don't forget, this man's a priest. That's the last verse in the Old Testament. If anybody should have known what an amazing visitation was just explained in the last 60 seconds, it's Zacharias. He knew what Malachi 4.6 said. That the Savior was going to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just and to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. The voice of one, come on, crying in the wilderness, make a way for the Lord. Create a landing strip. And Zechariah said to the angel, how? <sighs> there was a show called F Troop, and that was the name of the Indian tribe. Where the heck are we? They were called the Hakawi tribe. Where the heck are we? I mean, we, we got to be really careful. I mean, we have to be so tuned in when the Lord... We're praying and praying, show us what to do, show us what to do. But if it doesn't fit the way we think it's supposed to come, we walk right past it. This man was a priest. High-ranking angel shows up and says, your prayers are answered, and you say, how? Right now, Mary was also wondering that same question, but she wasn't a priest. I don't think she was praying, Lord, impregnate me. She was going to get married to Joseph. Probably wasn't on the scope of her radar, but this man, it says, your prayer was answered. Don't ask him how. Okay? I'm an old man. My wife is well advanced in years. Well, what about Abraham and Sarah? You're a priest. You know these things. And Gabriel said, you need a time out to think about what you just said. <laughs> 2,000 years ago, they were getting time outs. The angel answered and said, I'm Gabriel who stands in the presence of God and was sent to speak to you to bring you these glad tidings. But behold, you'll be mute and not able to speak. That'll stop you from saying how. <laughs> and not able to speak until the day these things take place. Because you didn't believe my words. Come on, let's just say, Lord, forgive me for any lack of faith, for a hard heart. Anywhere callous and scar tissue has, has stopped me from believing you. I don't want to be this guy. You didn't believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their own time. Now, just fast forward, right? What verse was that? Luke 1, 20. 47 verses later, what, what does it say about Zacharias? When his voice was restored, because John was born and they brought him to be dedicated eight days later. And then what are you going to name him? And they give Zacharias a little thing to write on because... His wife said, John, because the angel told him that was going to be the name, right? And as he writes down John, he's able to start speaking again. 
You think the timeout worked? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at what he says. He sang from the fullness of the Spirit, a prophetic blessing. May the Lord God of Israel be blessed indeed. I'll tell you, I'm, I'm just going to try to make it current, okay? How many church services have you gone to and you had to wear a mask the whole time? Like, shouldn't we be grateful that we can actually sing out loud now and not have to worry about the mask? Like, that wasn't that long ago that we were having to do that. And we, we forget because then we're on to the next thing. But what I don't have, but what about all the things I do have? And if any other season in the year is about gratitude for what we do have, it's now. Light shining in the darkness. The star up at the top of the tree to remind us right now, you may have your own opinions about Christmas trees. So we like them. And we really like the way Sandy makes the Christmas tree, don't we? Look at what he says. He prophesies. This man who, who in the presence of Gabriel faltered says, God's intervention has begun. With the birth of his son, God's intervention has begun. And he has moved to rescue us, the people of God. And the Lord has raised up a powerful sign of liberation for us from among the descendants of God's servant, King David. As was prophesied through the mouths of his holy prophets in ancient times, God will liberate us from our enemies and from the hand of our oppressors. Psalm 106.10. Is that true today? Is God still in the liberation business from oppression? Yes. To think that that doesn't happen. And, oh, people don't need deliverance anymore. Once you become a Christian, you don't need deliverance. We beg to differ. I hope you don't. That would be awesome. But it's not a negative if you do, okay? We want to get the critters out. All of them. Verse 72, God will show mercy, promised to our ancestors. Upholding and abiding covenant that he made with them, remembering the original vow that he swore to Abraham, from whom all are descended. God will rescue us from the grasp of our enemies so that we may serve him without fear all the days in holiness and justice in the presence of the Lord. There's a guy who could only say how is now prophesying and he needs an extra 10 minutes because he can't stop. And you, my son at the baby dedication, will be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will be the one to prepare the way for the Lord, which is what it says in Isaiah 40, verse 3, so that the Lord's people will receive knowledge of their freedom through the forgiveness of their sins. All this will flow from the kind and compassionate mercy of God. So my testimony is, is not just that I was doing reckless things, is that the reckless things I was doing were driven by trying to medicate my pain. Doing the drugs is bad enough. Like, that could kill you. But we don't always make the connection that the dumb things you do when you're high. I can't even describe how dumb they were. And when it says the kind and compassionate mercy of God, Anybody else can relate? Like, there's no way you deserve to be forgiven. Why? I had a guy pound his fist on the table one time say, why would he forgive me? It doesn't seem fair. That's, that's what he's saying. The guy is saying, why would he forgive me? Because he knew what happened. And partly why he was pounding the table is because we then also have to forgive other people. It's really hard. When you don't know the Lord, boy, it's really hard, isn't it? But he'll give you the grace to do it. Because as the grace has been extended to you, you're able to extend it to other people. Then, huh, this timeout really worked on Zacharias. A new day is dawning, he says. The sunrise from the heavens will break through in our darkness. And those who huddle in night, those who sit in the shadow of death, will be able to rise and walk in the light. Drug-free in my case. Unless you count caffeine, then that's a problem. But <laughs> that's legal at least. <laughs> Guided in the pathway of peace. I'm, I'm almost done. I'm going to finish in Galatians. Thank you, Nate. Right on cue. Can we stand? Hallelujah, Lord, for your word. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for filling us with your spirit. 
Go ahead, ask him. Just stir it up. Lord, I want more. I want more. There used to be a song when, in the early days of my walk and it said, I want another drink. <laughs> Fill me up, Lord. That drink of your spirit. And we want more. We want more. Because we could be more like Jesus. Not for our own selfish needs, but we want to be more like Jesus. So this is where I'll end. It says, when the right time arrived, God sent his son into the world, born of a woman and subject to the law. How many know it's the right time right now? <laughs> right? This is the year of the visitation of the Lord's favor. This is the year of jubilee for somebody. If you don't know the Lord, today could be your day. All debts were forgiven in the year of jubilee. And that's what Jesus said in, in Luke chapter 4. He said, today, this verse is fulfilled in your hearing. So the availability of the freedom and that liberation that he talked about is here right now. It was the right time when Jesus came, sent his son into the world, born of a woman, subject to the law, to those who, like him, were subject to the law. Isn't that wild that Jesus was subject to the law too? That he had to be obedient in order to get the Father's blessing. The only human being who ever lived his full life, 33 years, without a sin. How would, how would he have suffered? He was just like us. So you know, you know how hard it is to resist temptation. I hope you're honest enough to admit that, right? Well, Jesus had to suffer that way. He was tempted in all ways without sin. Yet without sin. I need that power. And I suffer that way too. All of us do, if we're honest. There's not one person here who, when you became a Christian, stopped getting tempted. Tr Trisha gets tempted with the spirit of smack sometimes. <laughs> she calls it the five-fold ministry right there, dude. But I digress. It's not about my wife. It's about me. Look in the mirror, bud. It is a form of suffering to have to resist temptation. We all have to deal with that. But just, Paul said, just like he suffered, I want to know, I want to be in the fellowship of his suffering so I can also receive the power of his resurrection. That's in the book of Philippians, right? So it all works out for us in the end. Light and momentary afflictions along the way. It says in Romans chapter 8, right? But just like, it's like we heard during that testimony. I didn't know what to say, but the Holy Spirit came up and groaned on the inside of me. When I lost my husband, she said. I didn't know what to say. You and I don't always know what to say, but Holy Spirit's right in there with us, giving us the words. Jesus was subject to the law. Ultimately, he wanted all, I wanted us all to be adopted as sons and daughters. What a powerful word for Christmas. Adoption as sons and daughters. What greater gift could you ever receive then the adoption papers have cleared and you are legally now a child of God. And your name is written in the will. And you're a joint heir with Jesus. That's good news. And he can heal me of this rickety voice I sound like I have today. <laughs> I receive my healing. Oh. I'm going to end with this verse. It says, because you are now part of God's family, he sent the spirit of his son into our hearts. And the spirit calls out, Abba, Father. So can you just lift your hands and just say this out loud, Abba, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you by the spirit that you place inside of our hearts. Just at the right time, you came into our lives. You made yourself real. I pray you're making yourself real to somebody here right now or somebody watching right now that they've run just like I did, ran from you, but then I have to stop and say, why am I running? Why don't I try it? Because I have nothing to lose. And, and that's beautiful that you don't write us off. Even though we've cursed you and we've abandoned you, you don't write us off. But you're waiting there for us when we're ready to say yes. Abba, Father, meant Daddy. In our men's ministry, we're we're reading a book now called Experience in the Father's Embrace. And it's such a beautiful title, isn't it? And can you do that for a minute? Can you just imagine the Father embracing you right now and telling you how much he loves you? Some of us have a hard time with that. Block out the natural image and just imagine 
the fact that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever would believe in him would have eternal life. That's what you have. That's the gift. That's this good news. And Lord, those of us that have known you for a long time, but if we've cooled off, we want you to light the fire in us again. Do you mean that? Could you just say that out loud? Light the fire in me again. Yes, Lord. There's an endless amount of fuel for your fire. And we just say, breathe on our hearts, Lord. Fan the flame. I'll fan the flame. You breathe your oxygen on that fire because we want to be alive for you in 2022. Liberation. That was the word this, this man used that wrote this version of the Bible. If you need liberation, it's available. Just lift your hand if you've been liberated from some bondage by the Lord. Look at all the hands in here. It's unbelievable that people would resist this. When we're all saying that we all come from different walks, different families, different life circumstances, he's the liberating God, the liberating king. He marches in and takes over and says, open that, that lock cell door and we'll let you walk out. And you get your record gets expunged. Isn't that a great word? expunged like it never happened thank you lord so i just pray that, that for those of us that are here we can experience your embrace especially those that never experienced it in the natural lord that you could show yourself to be true just the right time you came and you gave us the right to be sons and daughters you adopted us into your family and it's a legal transaction when we say yes it's completed so we say yes to you right now as we head into another calendar year. But in your year of the house, in your year of the family, 5782, we say yes to you. We say yes to Abba Father. Make yourself real to us in Jesus' name. All right, we just want to say a prayer. There could be somebody here you're visiting or in from out of town and you, you were asked to come as a guest here today or somebody watching online. We just want to say it, it's not complicated. Would you agree, church? And people will say it's free, but it wasn't free to Jesus. He paid for our redemption with his blood, with his life. He gave his life as a sacrifice for us. And we're just here to tell you it works. Come on, church. Doesn't it work? Yeah. <laughs> it works. So all you have to do is invite him to come into your heart. You do you need to have a reckoning of sin. And you have to have a desire to want to stop that sin and obey him. And you don't need to have to understand all that right now. You just have to say yes. He'll meet you in your yes. So we'll just say the prayer out loud together as a church, okay? Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I recognize there's sin in my life. And I need to be saved from the punishment from that sin. I heard good news today that I can be saved by accepting you in my life and the work you did to redeem me from the punishment of sin. I surrender my will to your will. I invite you to come in and take the reins of my life. Not my will, but your will be done. I thank you by faith. My sins are forgiven. Fill me with your spirit. Help me understand your word. And be a disciple of Jesus so that I could spend the rest of this life and all of eternity as your son or daughter. I cry, Abba, Father. I receive you in my heart. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So now, church, pray, pray, pray. If there's anybody here that said that prayer, this could be one of the hardest times. I, I've told people I felt like my, na my feet were nailed to, to the floor when I answered that call in church after, after the kitchen. So what did I do? I just took my shoes off and went up to the altar. Right? If you feel like your, your feet are nailed to the floor, just come up here. Just come up to the altar. Take a step of faith and say, you know what? I'm done with that old life. Do a prophetic act and walk up to the altar and say, I'm ready, publicly, I'm ready to say that old life is nothing but death 
Sin, the wages you get, the paycheck you get from sin is death. Jesus gives you a different paycheck. That's life. Amen. All right, so I'm guessing all of you are Christians. There is going to be a prayer ministry team up here. If you need prayer for anything at any time, every service that we have, there's always prayer ministry. So come up. I would just like to bless you before you leave, okay? Could you lift your hands one more time? And could I just say what a privilege I feel to be in the pulpit here and to be going into 2022, leading this amazing flock. You guys bless me. After my wife, you're a great gift to me for Christmas just to see you all here. We love you all very much. And I just bless you with a Father's blessing, with the Father God, Abba Father, the, the blessing of a, of a God that loves you for who you are and isn't shaming you, it isn't naming you, it isn't, isn't calling you things that don't agree with who you really are. That's not God, that's the enemy. So receive the Father's blessing today that he is your great present help in every time of trouble and your great and exceeding reward. I pray that you never have ever seen it like he's going to show it to you now. What a great and exceeding reward the Father is in your life. And those uh, at home, if you don't know the Lord and you said yes today, that's the best decision you will make in your whole life. And all God's people said, make a little noise. Best decision you could ever make is to say yes to Jesus. Have an awesome Christmas. See you next Sunday. Well, see you Wednesday night and then hopefully next Sunday too. If you want...